Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me in uh, today's presentation. Well, uh, today we will talk about the Jakarta E and the Eclipse microprofile existing in Wildfly. Um, basically, uh, Wildfly and the microprofile at uh, DevConf uh, uh, has two talks by me. One is uh, today, and uh, today we will focus uh, on architectural aspect, uh, why microprofile in Jakarta exists uh, is important uh, together, and why it's important to have uh, both uh, in uh, the same application server to be able to migrate from uh, a monolith to a microservice-oriented uh, architecture. <clears throat> because, uh, uh, you know, um, Jakarta EE is uh, the standard monolith uh, architecture and uh, microprofile could bring you microservice uh, architecture, but uh, is not uh, all or nothing always, but uh, there is something in the middle and uh, we need to uh, migrate uh, our system. Today is extremely focused the presentation on the architectural side and the reason behind and what, what you find in Wildfly, facilitated this process and so on. Is not a lot of example. I have a few and we will see if we can have a look. But tomorrow I have a workshop at 12 a.m. And uh, please join me and uh, let's put uh, your hand in the jam. And uh, we will try to migrate a, a quite complex uh, Jakarta e application. Of course, uh, we, we don't have time to migrate a real world application. It's just an example, but an example uh, that uh, could be um, very useful to understand uh, which is the steps uh, for migrate uh, from uh, an architecture to the other. And uh, we will do that using uh, Wildfly for sure, and, but uh, anything else that makes sense. Uh, uh, if we will have time, uh, I will demonstrate how with a microservice and a microprofile you can mix things. Uh, and uh, for example, you can have uh, Part of your microservices on Wildfly and part on Quarkus and maybe on uh, Node.js. I don't think I will have time also for Node.js, but anyway, just to get you the idea that microservice architecture is agnostic from technology and web server or application server point of view. So, uh, the presentation has uh, basically uh, three people, me, uh, that's me, uh, and uh, well, I joined her that 10 years ago in uh, YAPI team uh, and uh, Wildfly team that formerly was a JBoss AS yes, uh, Wildfly uh, born uh, in uh, 2007 as name, but uh, is just a brand of uh, a long uh, long time of working at JBoss AS, started in 1990. And uh, I joined as core developer, and then I switched to the dark side of management three years ago. Uh, my micro focus is exactly on coordinating the effort around the micro profile in Wildfly, and uh, is uh, a lot of fun, both uh, on the uh, technology side and the people side, because uh, uh, you know, different technology and uh, different people uh, coming together with different background uh, and uh, really a lot of fun and uh, we are uh, achieving a great result, I think. And uh, so thank you very much for everyone who participated to this effort. A few of them are in the room. Um, you find me everywhere, GitHub, Twitter, LinkedIn, and, or whatever as my stay because uh, I'm not so young, so, <laughs> so I, I, I took, uh, I took the, the same uh, nickname uh, everywhere before anyone uh, took the, uh, it. <clears throat> With Wildfly, Wildfly, uh, I don't think Wildfly need a much presentation. As said, uh, is a brand uh, of uh, uh, 2007 uh, about GBOS AS. Yes, uh, is probably one of the most well-known uh, uh, Java EE and uh, then Jakarta EE application server. Um, open source, first of all, is open source. 
And uh, second, probably it works uh, like a charm. Who is Jakarta E? Jakarta E is the open source, the rebranded version of Java E. Uh, two years ago, uh, Oracle uh, stepped back from Java E and uh, donated uh, uh, the specification to the community. Eclipse Foundation took them and uh, uh, founded uh, this uh, effort called the Jakarta EE, is fully compatible uh, with Java EE 8, uh, is as open specification, as open source TCK and process. This is the main difference between that and the Java EE. Is no more proprietary and uh, driven by Oracle, even if uh, it was a community with a lot of participation, uh, Red Hat was uh, one of them. Uh, but um, but uh, it's open source, and uh, open source, and uh, open standard, open process, uh, and uh, it could be a new bright future for those kind of uh, specification. Why is important? <clears throat> uh, nowadays, uh, uh, if, you, uh, if you talk uh, with uh, a young developer and ask uh, how he wanted to start his new uh, enterprise uh, application. No one or a few of them talk about Java in general. Uh, everyone uh, talk about you know, the JS or Python or uh, anything else. Uh, but uh, Java still matter and uh, is uh, at the time, in, in, I think, uh, last. Uh, um, Last stats that, that I looked at uh, is the second language uh, used in uh, GitHub. And uh, Java E still matter because uh, there is tons and tons of uh, installed product using Java E and so compatible to Jakarta E. And uh, we can ignore how much code is out there written in Java and Jakarta E. Uh, we will see during the presentation that uh, we can uh, throw away everything uh, because uh, it has costs, basically. And uh, with microprofile, microprofile by, by its own definition aims to optimize enterprise Java for microservice architecture. What does it mean that? Uh, it means that uh, it provides a standardization of the best uh, API already present uh, in the community and in the market, driving a, a fast innovation, and uh, having a, piece, uh, a, a pace of uh, release much more uh, uh, quick than uh, Java E or Jakarta E. Uh, Basically, microprofiler has three releases per year, uh, minor release, one, one major per year, more or less, and uh, three, three minor or major per year. That is quite impressive. Uh, I, I'm in the Java world since uh, more than 10 years, 10 years as a redactor, but uh, much more than that. And um, as a... a an old dinosaur of uh, Java EE, three releases per year is quite impressive because it's not a release of a product, it's a release of specification, it's a release of standard. And uh, it, it's uh, really impressive and it is driving uh, innovation throughout them. That is um, not a joke to, to keep the pace when you are uh, the implementer, but, uh, but still uh, is uh, interesting. Basically, uh, microprofile uh, is composed by Various specification. Part of them, CDI, JSON, JAXRS, JSONB, and so on, are also part of uh, uh, Jakarta EE. So it's exactly what it aims uh, to do optimize uh, Java EE for microservice. So using the best part. Uh, the more agile part of Jakarta E, and on top of them, build something more. And more is fault tolerance, is metrics, uh, is uh, propagation of uh, token, and the REST client, and so on. But, uh, and this is the umbrella, the, the platform, the, the last release of Microprofile 3.2. But uh, there is also other specification that uh, is 
part of a microprofile effort, even if it's not yet part of the umbrella, and not necessarily will be part of the umbrella of the standard. So you can declare to be microprofile compatible just implementing the umbrella part, but the other part is interesting too, because as a reactive part, and not only uh, reactive, there is more than uh, those three, I, I put just uh, three, but uh, there is uh, more than those three. Why I'm mentioning that? Because uh, this demonstrates that uh, innovation is uh, always uh, the key point uh, and uh, the driving uh, idea of a microprofile effort as a standard. <clears throat> uh, I given a slide here to, to mention uh, who is participating uh, microprofile and who is participating uh, Jakarta IE? Basically, is almost the same company, a, a few more for Jakarta IE, but uh, everyone in uh, Java enterprise world is uh, participating uh, <coughs> the committee. Even if there is uh, a, a few people uh, in the community more active th than others, but uh, that's uh, quite normal in any community. I'm saying that just to uh, underline that uh, microprofile has a strong support uh, from the market and from uh, the community. is not uh, uh, to be considered uh, something uh, less supported than Jakarta. It is uh, oh, has almost the, the same support. Both are on Eclipse uh, Foundation, uh, but they aim to solve a different problem. A question that uh, uh, a lot of people ask me when, when I talk about uh, them, uh, Jakarta E and Microprofile, is uh, if and when they will join again. Because, you know, Microprofile uh, born as a spin-off of Jakarta E or Java E, uh, and then there is a lot of discussion around uh, uh, rejoining uh, the effort and uh, bring into Jakarta E 10, 12, I don't know, uh, almost the same concept. At the moment, it is a discussion that is going on uh, time to time in the community. Uh, my personal uh, belief is that uh, uh, would not make uh, much sense to, to bring them uh, together again, because they they solve a different problem, or better, they solve the same problem in a different way. So it makes sense to have two different uh, uh, standards, even if uh, collaboration and uh, common uh, specification is uh, right and uh, there. And, so, and now an announce, because uh, Microprofile Beta 1 released uh, last week, support Microprofile 3.2. That is uh, uh, the first uh, release of Wildfly, a beta, but uh, that's still uh, a release for the community, with a full support for microprofile. And, uh, well, uh, it's a success for us, uh, but uh, more important, uh, it's something that is perceived as uh, needed by the community. This is a comment that uh, I've got back uh, in the uh, microprofile community when I announced uh, this. Uh, and, uh, well, can be read in a different way, but, uh, but, but I, I wanted to, to, to read it uh, uh, in the most positive one. Uh, and, uh, well, yes, uh, we, we covered the gap, and uh, we are one of the most used the Jakarta EE, Java EE application server, and now we support also microprofile. And I want to underline also, because uh, uh, there is uh, a lot uh, of uh, implementation of pure microprofile or pure Jakarta EE, or maybe something in the middle. So Jakarta EE, just a web profile, so a reduced set of specification of Jakarta EE, and the microprofile. While the file I support Jakarta E full profile, so all the specification of Jakarta E, and also microprofile. And why it's important? Because architecture evolves in time. Well, I'm Italian, 
I'm Italian, and so and I and I and I love cooking too. So the, the, this slide uh, is uh, when I see this example, uh, I, I, I can't resist to put it in a slide. Uh, the slide basically uh, say that uh, in the 90s uh, we wrote spaghetti code. Uh, spaghetti, uh, well, you know what is spaghetti code probably. Uh, is something that uh, growing up and up and up and become uh, difficult to follow, uh, follow the code or uh, interact with the code or even understand the code. Then, uh, so we move to a growing monolith, uh, and uh, it's called a lasagna uh, architecture. Uh, lasagna because uh, is layer one up uh, the other, and so something that separates the layer that, that uh, should be fine. But uh, if you are Italian or if you have ever visit uh, just an Italian restaurant and uh, you get a lasagna, uh, you you easily understand that those layer is not so well separated. And uh, should not to, to have a good lasagna, but not a good software. Um, so we move to microservice era, and uh, the, the Italian dishes uh, that uh, we select uh, is tortellini. Uh, tortellini basically is uh, pasta with uh, something inside, Typical uh, is uh, meat, but uh, every tortellini, uh, every tortellino is uh, uh, separated from uh, the other. But uh, the sauce uh, make uh, one dish uh, together, and uh, you, you can have just one tortellino, of course. You need uh, a, a dish of tortellini, and this is the idea of a microservice. Microservice is a single uh, single service doing something, uh, but uh, to, to have uh, a, a good dish, you need uh, a lot of tortellini working together in your dish. So, what concept do they have in common? Reuse or try to reuse? Uh, yes, spaghetti code. Spaghetti code uh, born in the 90s and uh, is not bad at all. It's basically what uh, we call it object-oriented programming that became a spaghetti code, but uh, it's object-oriented programming. So reuse inside the same application or team libraries, uh, or team, so basically classes, and the libraries uh, born to use from third party. A library, what is just a set of object-oriented uh, uh, code that you can use from third party and libraries and libraries and libraries and uh, inheritance and uh, all the object oriented uh, stuff uh, and become a spaghetti code basically because uh, you lose the control. So let's move to layered product. Uh, and so we want to reuse on different uh, layered team. So any team is responsible for a layer. So I have the presentation layer, the, the classical MVC, model view controller. There is someone that is responsible of the model, someone of the view, and someone of the controller. And each team need to reuse what the other team does. OK. And component, uh, and component uh, born for reuse from third party. Mm. That's not be a great success. We, we will uh, see in the next slide. But uh, so let's switch to microservice, reusing different system, even geographically distributed. So basically, is almost the same idea, totally different implementation, but almost the same idea to reuse something. And uh, this time we reuse a component that is maybe geographically distributed. And API subscription is born to reuse third-party software. So why I say try to reuse? Because object-oriented born to reuse code. Inheritance and polymorphism defines the boundaries. Private and public API define the decoupling. And always violated, always. 
always in, in, in every in every manner that that, I, that you can imagine boundaries uh, and uh, <clears throat> and the reuse is violated in any object oriented spaghetti code so layered product born to reuse libraries and layers public code api define boundaries and the coupling and then we invented the spi reflection security uh, stuff and so on to violate uh, the boundaries and the decoupling that uh, we invented. And, and finally, nowadays, we switch to microservice. Microservice is born to reuse service. REST API define boundaries and decoupling. We are still working on how creative, uh, creatively violate them, but, um, but um, I, I think. Uh, we are, uh, we are working on it, and we will invent something else in 10 years. But uh, today, uh, we have a microservice. So the difference uh, in a slide is quite easy to understand. A monolith has a user interface, a business layer, a data interface, and a single database. This is the, the classical uh, implementation or definition of uh, it. Microservice architecture, a set of microservices that is uh, distributed and uh, have its own database. And uh, the only communication is between microservice and microservice could be geographically distributed. There is a lot of definition around there about uh, what is a microservice, someone tell you that uh, should be less than 100 uh, line of code. Uh, I think line of code is uh, always the, the, a bad measurement for everything, from productivity of people to uh, what is a microservice or not. Basically, is uh, something that uh, define a remote API and uh, is uh, um, stateless should be stateless, defining a remote API. Not necessarily REST, but uh, most users is REST. And uh, uh, have its own data. That could be a database or not, but uh, it, it has uh, its own data that is not exposed or is exposed only uh, throughout a uh, well-defined API. So, is the microservice uh, the solution for everything? Well, I think the solution for everything is to write a good code in general, because uh, you can uh, creatively and easily create a, oh, sorry. Well, uh, for two reasons, sorry, I, I, I forgot this slide. For two reasons. First of all, uh, you can throw away everything today and have the same, uh, the same system working tomorrow. There is a lot of investment in, in, uh, in a building, and uh, okay, you, you, can, uh, you, you can explode uh, some bomb and, uh, and, destru and destruction uh, it, but probably is not a good idea because there is a lot of investment. Maybe it's better to uh, reuse the same and have uh, more beautiful uh, apartment uh, just uh, with less uh, impact uh, work. But uh, what I was saying is that uh, you can easily get uh, the microservice spaghetti if, uh, if, you do, if you don't uh, write a good code. Because, uh, okay, you can write a lot of microservice. Everyone, uh, every microservice uh, needed to communicate with other microservice. Well, and what I'm saying, what, exactly what uh, we use it to do with classes or libraries. We just uh, moved uh, to the network uh, the same problem. And uh, it's not necessarily easier to get problem on the network instead of uh, in the code. We moved, to, uh, we moved probably uh, responsibility from developer to DevOps. That could be good if you are a developer. Probably not good for uh, people who have to pay DevOps because <laughs> today DevOps is paid a lot. So, 
what you need to do to redesign a monolith to a microservice. I identified three, three uh, steps, and uh, they are not the only three steps, but probably the most important in my humble opinion. And uh, all of them is not easy step. First of all, you have to identify services. And it's not a joke. Uh, it's the hardest part, probably, because uh, when you look at your monolith, well, you, you have basically two, two different problems. Uh, looking in a monolith, you have to understand it. <laughs> because, uh, again, it, it, it has become uh, years by years uh, like uh, a monster. I, I perfectly remember, in my previous job, is 10 years ago now, but uh, I have a lot of uh, contact uh, with my uh, former colleagues. And I started... Uh, 20 years ago, more or less, on the first GBOS AES, a big monolith uh, producing document and uh, financial document, basically. And they evolve and evolve and evolve it, and they are on the latest version of uh, our product, by the way. But still, is an incredible big system, and no one, really no one of my former colleagues, uh, is able to define boundaries, boundaries of each layer. And so when I asked them, I had a dinner with them last week, and I asked, OK, why don't move everything to microservice? The, uh, the funny but, but a real answer is because we don't know where a service begin and where a service end. Uh, and, but they are ve very good engineers. I, I'm not saying that they are bad. They just manage a 20 years old big monolith. And uh, so uh, they know that, that they should move to microservice. And uh, we discussed it a bit. And uh, identify service is the first step. And it's something that they have to do. Then define the API, and this is not a joke too, uh, because you have to define clear API and clear boundaries with the API, and uh, divide things throughout API is not easy. It's not easy uh, whatever you develop your system. You can develop your system as spaghetti code or as layered code, but defining API is always the hardest thing. And then, that was my suggestion in that dinner, look at progressive migration. It's not all or nothing, it's not like that. Never in uh, IT, at least, in serious IT, okay? If, if you have uh, just a quick start or an example, you can rewrite it uh, in an hour, okay? Fine, throw away and uh, rewrite it. But if you have a 20 years old big system moving thousands of million euros, uh, you can do that, never. And so, the question is, why is it important to have a server where Jakarta E and MicroProfile coexist? Exactly for the reason I mentioned. For a progressive uh, migration and to be able to refactor to MicroProfile. Migrate step by step is uh, very important, but also adding MicroProfile feature to a monolith is uh, very, very important. It's two different uh, uh, things. It, uh, at the first look, it seems uh, the same things, but uh, progressive migration means uh, splitting uh, a monolith uh, in a microservice, and uh, is uh, one job, and the other one is uh, to add cloud-native feature to the monolith. Uh, adding cloud-native feature to the monolith throughout the microprofile is possible and should be done probably as first step of any migration, because uh, it uh, will permit you to monitor your monolith and understand better your monolith. So, 
I've tried to um, define ER for use case. The first one is the one I was mentioning, and is about adding observability. Adding observability, what does it mean? Basically, it means to add some cloud native feature to your monolith that will permit you to monitor it. The, those are called the metrics, are called the alt check, and uh, um, tracing. We will see what I mean uh, later. But there is a, a second uh, use case that is adding fault tolerance. One of the, the worst uh, uh, problems that uh, a monolith could suffer is uh, uh, implementing fault tolerance because uh, uh, big monolith uh, uh, built uh, their fault tolerance uh, basically on cluster. And cluster is uh, today no more the, the easy selection in a cloud native world. But uh, if you move your monolith to the cloud, you need to have some fault tolerant mechanism because uh, uh, whenever you split a monolith into microservice, one of the first uh, um, behavior that, uh, that uh, you, you have is that there is much more communication you know, in the network because monolith is, is a monolith. Everything is in the same server. And uh, if you don't use the, if you didn't use uh, some strange uh, things like uh, EJB remoting uh, or uh, high IOP or uh, something like that, and everyone has used it. But uh, anyway, uh, if you refactored uh, it to stay inside the monolith, so communicate only between layers, all the communication is internal to the server and uh, is uh, easier to track. Uh, so it's uh, all or nothing. If the service doesn't work, it's because the monolith is uh, not working. When you split uh, in a different service, uh, there is a lot of communication on the network and uh, each service uh, could fail. Fail for good reason, because you are uh, releasing a new version of that, uh, of that uh, service. But, of course, if you are in a 24-7 uh, system, so you, you can't stop it, and you are moving to the cloud exactly because you don't want to stop it never, you need a fault-tolerant mechanism whenever a, a service goes down. Uh, a third use case is using other services with REST client. When you split uh, everything in service, uh, you need some mechanism to invoke uh, easily other services, yours or third-party service. And the REST client and the other API in microprofile could be used inside the Jakarta EE uh, monolith to invoke external service. That is a very important step because uh, we, we were talking about uh, <coughs> a progressive migration. But to make a progressive migration, you need a clear and easy mechanism to invoke new service or split the service from the monolith. Otherwise, everything is too much hard. And last but not least, use old code as a service. What I mean with use old code as a service? There is part of code that have been developed years ago and or layer by layer in the last years that you should not throw away and maybe you can't throw away. A, a, a quick example from my background as engineer, I, I, I'm used to manage uh, Iron Jacamar, the JCA project inside Wildfly. Um, JCA, JCA, what is basically? JCA is a specification to connect to external system, inbound or outbound. There is a lot of development uh, around the JCA to connect proprietary external system. We have a lot of customers 
uh, who has uh, written their own research adapter. Uh, who has written their own resource adapter and uh, uh, use it to communicate inbound or outbound uh, with the application server. And uh, those investments are, uh, in a lot of cases, close to the source from some, uh, uh, some provider that maybe is, uh, is no more active on the market and so on. And so you can throw away everything, but you can isolate this piece of code, this JCA part, so connection with external system, and make it a service. And so you keep a, a little piece of Jakarta E, and uh, you, you will make a service on top of it. This is the reason because I, I don't like 100 line of code definition, because for sure, uh, those kind of service could not be 100 line of code. But it's very useful in a progressive migration because, again, you can uh, uh, destroy your, uh, your building in uh, one bomb. So, uh, time is uh, always a problem. Anyway, uh, let, uh, let's talk about uh, those uh, use cases. Uh, if you will join me tomorrow in the workshop, uh, we will try to implement uh, those four use cases. Today, I, I'll give you just an idea of uh, what does it mean. I think observability is very, very easy. Sorry. Basically, you can use uh, some of the specification from microprofile to adding uh, some feature to any code that, uh, that you, you can access also in a monolith. Metrics uh, to measure uh, uh, or count uh, access to a resource, uh, alt to, um, to, to check uh, the alt state of a service, but this alt state uh, of a service could be of the whole monolith or even a connection to database or whatever you want because it's, it's something that you wrote as code. And they use open tracing to see where the call and where the, the, the network uh, uh, API is called. And adding a matrix, for example, is just a matter of, uh, uh, is a point or no? Uh, in, it's just a matter of adding uh, a few annotation. And uh, adding this annotation, this is a classical uh, Hello World uh, REST API deployed on Wildfly. And um, deploying uh, this, uh, you get, uh, uh, get matrix uh, count for uh, this call. And you can use uh, standard um, tools in, uh, in cloud native to monitor it, I, I mean Prometheus or Grafana, uh, or both, and uh, measure uh, how much time uh, this uh, has been invocated and uh, so on. And so adding this is a first step because, uh, okay, this is a narrow world application, but uh, uh, if it would be uh, an invocation to some complex uh, stuff in a monolith, you can uh, adding uh, various step of metrics and understand uh, how much calls uh, are going on in uh, various branch of your code and uh, trying to uh, reverse engineering uh, in, at some extent uh, your monolith and understand how to split the service. Because remember that one of the hardest things is to understand where you have to split. And to understand where you have to split, sometimes you have to reverse engineer your system. Because you probably you didn't write it. You are, a lot of you are too much young to, to have written a, a monolith. Um, but also because, uh, again, as my colleague uh, that, uh, had, had lost control of their monolith because too big. 
And the same is uh, about uh, adding full tolerance. Full tolerance is uh, a single specification in microprofile that permit to do something like that. Uh, for example, this is again an hello world with uh, a, random, um, a random fail. If you invoke it without uh, those two annotations, retry and fallback, uh, what happens uh, is that uh, time to time uh, you get uh, a failure. And this is not acceptable, of course, in a distributed microservice application because uh, if you stop your service, uh, again, w w what I already told you, if you stop your service, uh, you need to access it. But uh, you can add to your uh, Wildfly, Jakarta E application, those retry uh, on and or fallback uh, annotation that basically retry, uh, retry for three times, but it's a configurable number of times. The same method before uh, throwing an exception. And the fallback, in case of exception, call uh, another fallback method that is uh, here uh, for uh, returning uh, a managed error. Using other service uh, with REST client, uh, using a REST client and uh, open API, you can uh, add more and more uh, um, external uh, call to, to, to REST API and uh, to man and manage uh, REST, your REST API, documenting uh, your API. Uh, usual called uh, as a service, uh, you start to using uh, much more specification. And uh, again, my example is uh, to reuse a GCA resource adapter code, but uh, adding metrics, adding fault tolerance, adding uh, some call to REST client, uh, and uh, of course, uh, is using JAXRS, uh, JSONB, and so on and so on. Is a, a bit more complex example. Uh, doesn't make sense uh, to, to show you in a single slide. Uh, we will try to do that uh, during the workshop tomorrow. But let me remark again that sometimes throw away old code idea is uh, uh, understandable, but uh, company made a big investment integrating proprietary external system, maybe implementing JCA resource adapter. Uh, we want to refactor to microservice uh, and uh, make it scalable. So what we can do, we encapsulate this piece of code that is a pure Jakarta E using a very old specification because JCA is one of the oldest specification. Uh, but uh, providing fault tolerance, providing metrics, and providing all the stuff that make it uh, cloud native. Hybrid cloud native, of course, because a JCA piece of code most probably can't run on OpenShift or doesn't make sense to run on OpenShift. It will uh, run on a local or a set of local uh, machine connecting to the external system but uh, building uh, a, an hybrid uh, cloud with your local code written in Jakarta EE, but uh, ready for the cloud. So, we have 10 minutes, and so maybe for a few questions, if you have, but uh, just uh, today takeaways. Uh, you can use Jakarta E and the microprofile together. It is, is the first takeaway. Uh, it's not uh, all or nothing. Uh, and is, um, even if uh, I would strongly suggest you to use Wildfly for that, uh, it's not mandatory even to use only Wildfly. You can use Wildfly for Jakarta EE and the interacting part, but all the other service that uh, you call could be written in uh, Quarkus if you want to use Java, but uh, also Node.js, also Python, or whatever. The Composer uh, monolith is more than using a shish source. 
you, you can take a monolith and, uh, and try to decompose uh, without thinking. You need to, define, to identify service boundaries and avoid uh, distributed spaghetti code because distributed spaghetti code is even worse than spaghetti code itself. Microservices require design. Mercury is the smallest planet in uh, our solar system, okay? But asteroids are not planets. Design your microservice for being uh, complete for itself at least. Don't, uh, uh, again, uh, 100 line of code uh, is something that I don't like as definition because uh, splitting too much is uh, like uh, uh, using too much uh, inheritance in object-oriented to, to get back to spaghetti code. Don't overuse any feature that a new technology gives you, never. Think about that, design. Also, the code can be cloud-ready. You can use microprofile to add Jakarta EE code cloud feature, like observability and fault tolerance. Complex systems are built on different bricks. Again, there is not absolutely right or wrong solution. Just use the solution that fits your problem. Design on your problem, non on your, not on your technology. Technology is a tool, a tool to solve a problem. Do not throw away everything. There is a case when integrate old code is a good idea. Because old code is maybe old, not elegant, or you don't perceive it elegant, but maybe if, if, you, if you ask uh, someone from the 60, uh, perceive it elegant. But anyway, old code is not always the bad. Could be reused should be reused, should be integrated in a more modern architecture. And the coexisting Jakarta E and the microprofile inside Wildfly give you all the tool set to make it. And uh, thank you. And see you tomorrow. If anyone has any question, we have five minutes. For the medium size, what is the challenge? From four other perspective, like how much effort do you take to migrate your whole system to the new using Jakarta and your type of services and all this stuff together that you discussed? Well, it's. Uh, Please repeat the question for the Yes, sure. So we will see if I, if I understood the question. Um, the question basically is uh, how much effort. Uh, you need to migrate a mid-size Jakarta E project to a microprofile, a pure microprofile one. Okay, the question is, uh, in general, in monolith, uh, a monolith written in Java, at least, uh, whatever that could be just based on servlet or Jakarta E or whatever, migrate to a modern uh, system microprofile uh, based. Uh, well, it, it's uh, almost an impossible answer because depending uh, how much effort, depending on the system itself, how much is already defined in boundaries. Uh, a general answer is that uh, progressive migration gives you 
the opportunity to uh, migrate step by step. And you decide how much effort to put uh, in this phase of the project. Because uh, uh, a project that work, a project that stay around for 20 years, like the one I mentioned of my former colleagues, that is a real year uh, from 20 years, is continuously evolving. And so you decide how much effort you need, you need and you want to spend to evolve your system and how much you want to evolve it. And that is uh, the reason because uh, something that support uh, hybrid uh, pure Java EE or pure servlet uh, like Wildfly and uh, microprofile together permit you to decide uh, where to cut off. You decide when you start and when you finish. You can also decide to have an agile approach. So decide to have uh, a few sprints on refactoring it and uh, you see how much you, you are able to refactor. The, the, the good news is that uh, if you work well, the system continue to work because uh, it on Wildfly, supporting microprofile from Wildfly 19 Beta 1, you have uh, the opportunity to have uh, hybrid things. And so mix and match between old and the new style. And so you can decide just to refactor 20% of your system because you have time for 20%. And then you have 80% on a monolith and 20% on a microservice. And next step is to become 60-40. And the next step is 50-50, and so on, and so on. Okay, again, uh, I, I understand your question, but it uh, really depends on your system. It's really tailored uh, on what you have and what you want uh, to get. It's not about uh, uh, API, basically. Uh, API are just uh, a set of tools. M maybe I, I'm, I'm not fully understanding. If, if you want, uh, we can discuss uh, offline. We are out of time, so thank you very much for joining. <laughs>